Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Piano Star Masterclass, brought to you by Piano Leak. I'm your host Brian Lin, a professional pianist and a piano teacher. Ever since I graduated from Juilliard a few years ago, making piano education accessible to everybody has been one of my main goals, and that's why I created this series, the Piano Star Masterclass. It's a 30-minute Star Talk interview with a guest teacher, followed by an hour of real-time one-on-one virtual piano lessons taught by the guest teacher. During the live stream, you can ask us any question in the chat, and we will do our best to answer them. The Piano Star Masterclass features piano experts coming from a variety of backgrounds, ranging from experienced piano pedagogue, professional concert pianists, to conservatory professors, giving you a ton of different, fresh perspectives. And of course, you, your child, or your student can also sign up to be a performer for these classes, and get a chance to perform for a live audience. To sign up, simply go to thepianoleague.com/masterclass. Now, I'd like to introduce our guest teacher today. Born in Kazan, Russia, Dr. Elena Elena Nestanova made her orchestral debut at the age of eight. In October 2015, she performed Tchaikovsky's first piano concerto with the Sichuan Philharmonic Orchestra in Chengdu, China. As an avid chamber musician, Elena is a co-founder member of the Nezhdanova Plechek duo with Czech cellist Dr. Roman Plechek. Many years of interest in and research of physiology of piano playing brought to her the opportunity of being commissioned to write a review of Irina Gorin's piano method, Tales of a Musical Journey, published by the Clavier uh, Companion magazine in November 2017. She is currently appointed as artist in residence and collaborative pianist in residence at Janacek Conservatory Summer Cello Academy. Everybody, please join me in welcoming Dr. Elena Lashnanova. Hi, Elena. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good, good. How are you doing in this、uh, lockdown? <laughs> doing well. Keeping busy. Actually, a little bit more busy than、um, I was when we weren't on lockdown. But it's it's good. It's productive. Right.、So. Great. Great. I I find myself being more productive、uh, in、uh, during this time as well. It's I guess it's the nat- nature of our, us pianists.、Yes. Always、uh, in 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 inside and 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 working on our. Our stuff.、Um, so、uh, since we only have thirty minutes, I'd just like to just、uh, jump right into our topic today,、um, which is about piano techniques and how to teach it from the start.、Um, first, I'd like to ask you: a lot of pian,、uh, a lot of people discuss piano techniques、um, in a variety of different ways. So my first question is: what makes you? What makes your Topic or what makes what you're going to talk about today unique,、uh-huh. and what's different about you know what you're going to talk about today? Oh, sure, <laughs> excellent question. So, well, I'll I'll have to say a little bit about my background, very briefly, yes, please, to give an idea.、Um, mm-hmm. So, I was born in Russia,、uh, and I was raised there until the age of fourteen. So, I was actually lucky enough,、uh, I guess you can say, to attend a elementary music school、uh, in Ulyanovsk. Um, and our music schools are actually government subsidized, which means uh, uh, anyone could audition, and big percentage of kids will get in,、uh, and it costs nearly nothing. So of course, it brought a lot of advantages that we had multiple lessons per week, different classes,、uh, play chamber music,、um, orchestra, choir,、uh, you name it. So. Uh, the one thing、um, I did grow up in the musical family, so I was submerged in the arts, in opera, watching ballet,、uh, listening to symphony orchestras from a very very young age.、Um, so when I attended the music school, I, I remembered my last teacher actually, and I'm most thankful to her because. Um, I think she was the one who really inspired me, wanting to become a teacher myself one day.、Um, and she often talked about、um, how to create a beautiful sound,、uh, always striving、uh, for good tone,、um, uh, bigger tone. Up, perhaps you can say that as well, and always uh, uh, work on im- imagination. So. 
Moving forward in 2000, uh, when I moved to the United States and I did graduate from high school here, I started teaching piano at the age of uh, 15, 16. So I really, of course, was excited to have my first student who actually, both of them just graduated college. And <laughs> Congratulations. Yeah, so <laughs> makes me feel quite old. Um, but yeah, and looking back, um, I really only had access to about two books written by Russian um, authors. One was by Alexander Nikolaev called The Russian School of Piano Playing. Maybe you have heard of that one. And Anna Artabalevskaya. And Anna Artabalevskaya um, uh, often spoke about uh, building the technique from the ground up. So musicality was always number one priority and then working with whatever child you have at hand. So I guess almost like mothering them in a way. Um, so, and uh, I also had an access to some American books and I started to notice major differences of how certain subjects were introduced, certain concepts were introduced. Um, and eventually I actually came across uh, Irina Goren's YouTube channel because I was researching more about pedagogy and that's how it kind of all got started and the circle came to completion I guess you can say. Yeah. Gotcha, gotcha <laughs> and uh, obviously uh, Irina Goren is, is such a huge influence on you know piano pedagogy uh, yeah. and, and piano technique in, in general. Um, so talk to us about um, why you think it's important to start you know, from the start, you know, start early. Why, why can't we just, you know, worry about, you know, technique later? <laughs> That's also really a good question. Mm -hmm. um, the way I think about it now, um, if you think about other instruments and how stu young students begin their very first lessons, playing the violin, uh, Suzuki or classical style, um, how to hold the trumpet or the clarinet or flute. So every instrument, has um, its own, I guess you could say, initial set of rules of developing good posture, learning how to hold a bow or learning to hold the instrument in your hands, uh, embouchure, uh, you know, wind, woodwind player, um, had, um, well, I already mentioned how to hold a bow. And I thought, why don't we do the same thing for piano? I mean, on one hand, if you think about it kind of jokingly, you could come up, take a pencil, poke at a note and it gives you a lovely little note so a lo little sound and then when you take all five of little stick fingers and you can kind of play a little song and there you go you play piano um but yeah putting jokes aside i realized that um a lot of initial preparatory work must be addressed from the very beginning and continued for future lessons to build on new habits from uh, from the very beginning. Um, so I, I guess you could also say the goal ultimately is, again, in my opinion, on the piano, is to produce a beautiful and a meaningful tone um, and then learn how the instrument works, learn how to connect notes more together in eventually playing pieces and be able to tell a story. I mean, isn't that kind of what we're... One one hundred percent agreed. I think uh, it's it's such a a um, common uh, uh, problem that I, I see among students that they when they don't start with you know uh, the, a, a good technique or uh, the right way, then they have to spend a lot of time fixing uh, fixing it later on, and that's that's a really a pain. So. Um, so why don't you uh, tell us a little bit of your secret? Um, um, what kind of techniques uh, do you um, teach your students and how do you think, you know, other young teachers out there, um, what kind of advice and, and uh, suggestions might you give them uh, in terms sure. of teaching this, this technique uh, from the start? 
<laughs> sure, sure. Um, I mean, I guess you can say that none of this is going to be um, a brand new, you know, discovery of a brand new planet that nobody knew existed. So I'm sure from different angles, different teachers through different generations all, you know, puzzled it together. And somehow, I guess you can call it the Russian school of playing. Um, although there are still certain elements that perhaps are not so great, uh, like forcing the sound or beating your students with the stick until they get it correctly i mean we don't want any of that of course right but I, i've always been interested in the russian school of can you tell oh. us a little bit about you know yeah. maybe maybe it, it's going to be part of your answers but just what what is the russian school of playing i i, I always find it fascinating and I, I i i see so many brilliant pianists coming yes. from russia so uh, um, why don't you explain a little bit <laughs> I guess perhaps in one uh, quick answer, you could say sound, sound production. Um, learning the, to have the ability to listen to yourself, to listen to the tone that you are producing. Um, Cantilena or uh, the perfect legato playing. Uh, I mean, once you, we at that level, you feel so accomplished, like, yes, I did so good. My teacher will be proud. Um, but of course, from the very beginning, and again, this is not just my research, but it's been around for a long time, how to introduce kids to experiment with music, how to experiment with sound. What is sound? How do you get a good sound, um, an excited, a happy tone from the piano? Or when you play a sad piece, how do you experience that sadness or emotion? Is it like a fake act or is it something you know you can actually feel? Um, so for a lot of that, I would say introduce your kids and your students to classical music as early as possible. Do a lot of listening games and actually makes a lesson go by quite more productively, I would say. Have them draw a picture, have them write a story. Uh, so they learn and gain the vocabulary needed later on to express themselves through music more. Um, some of the common approaches that I found, I guess you can say the Eastern European books, by Anna Artabalevskaya and Irina Gorin, uh, who actually, Irina now, uh, I believe for the past three years, she's been teaching in China as an assistant professor or um, visiting professor uh, at some uh, Chinese universities in Chengdu. So what I've learned from gathering this information is relaxation from the very beginning. So a lot of these, some of these books do introduce like before you even touch the piano, we'll learn to swing our arms. We'll learn where the big muscles are. Now, of course, you don't tell all this scientific information to children. They don't care and don't understand. You have to turn it into a game. Um, you know, uh, one of my favorites is let's pretend we are Santa Claus holding the reins. So you tighten your hands, stretch your arms, and then you let go. So which one feels better? Tight, forced, or relaxed? I mean, even very simple things like that. Um, so I guess uh, just for the, uh, our timing, uh, I will move a little bit quicker. Uh, sitting position. So how do we even learn to sit in front of this giant? Now, in our ideal world, uh, I would love every piano kid to have an access to an acoustic instrument. It does not have to be a baby grand or Steinway, but just a good, solid, upright piano. Um, to understand the mechanics of it. So when the hammer hits the string, the sound originates there. Unfortunately, keyboards, no matter how weighted they are, they just don't work the same. So we'll start with the piano. Um, then I uh, also advise parents to buy an adjustable bench. Uh, you can now find a number of not very expensive ones. Um, how high you're sitting. So one thing I actually learned from Irina I thought was quite ingenious is to think about where the location of your belly button is and match it to the white keys. So that's how high you need to be sitting for a child. Now mm -hmm. for grown up people, of course, at that point we figure out what feels more comfortable. Um, you do need to have a foot stool or a pedal extender. Um, so if the kid cannot naturally plant their feet on the ground and they're dangling them, you absolutely must have something uh, solid to have them plant their feet. Um, and then if it's a pedal extender, they can even practice with the, uh, the little fake pedal. Um, and another thing, uh, how they're sitting and their posture before they begin playing. Uh, if you taught for a number of kids, you may notice they immediately want to jump in. They want to experience and it's so beautiful. But playtime is wonderful, but let's 
have a learning time, right? Yes. So through through games, through kind approach, through perhaps even guiding your hands, your students' hand, show them how we're supposed to be lifting our hands. So uh, where's the weight originating? Uh, why do we need to keep a, a floating and relaxed wrist? Um, and eventually it all kind of um, builds on a, onto each other. Um, another, uh, I think a very important technical, let's call technical approach is the non legato um, technique. So um, what it, in your opinion is non legato, if I may ask? Yeah. In Non legato, in my opinion, would be um, any sort of um, it would be something that's in between a staccato and a legato, where you have to hold it for a while, but then it doesn't. Uh, yeah, it, it's hard to define it. Really, right? <laughs> it's hard exactly. to define it in the in the in the yeah. yeah. Yeah, and that's something I also struggle. So like, well, non legato, okay, like you play it, let go, you know, do a little jump, jump here. <laughs> this is like very basic mo motion, but. Not really. So uh, in a number of, again, the Russian books, like such as Nikolaev, one thing that I was always confused because I actually didn't study the Nikolaev method, um, but I did somehow ended up having the books and taught from them later. But you will notice in the very first one, all of the note reading are super simple. And uh, he introduces reading on the staff almost right away. Um, and using only middle finger, finger number three. So imagine you play like Mary had a little lamb, but you're only using middle finger. Why? Mm. Who knows? And so again, through my research and being introduced to Dina's book, Tales of a Musical Journey, then there's another wonderful teacher in Germany, Irina Mintz, she has a hello piano. They have some similarities about the non-legato approach. So what this means is, uh, <laughs> It may be a little bit too complicated, but basically, once we learned uh, with the, I guess, with the guidance of where the weight is coming from. So we want to imagine our arm being completely free. So shoulder is relaxed and the energy, I guess, uh, is floating all the way from shoulder all the way to the fingertip. So the students are learning to, you don't want to say perhaps create a shape like you think maybe a, well, make a circle uh, or hold the ball and it kind of fixes it in a position. Uh, there are other ways that we can explain this. But once they're able to play on the tip of the finger without the collapsing the joint, which is another common mistake, right? So we want to dip the finger into the key by not breaking the wrist too much. And with leading of the wrist, we want to let go or lift it up. And it has to be very gentle, not pushing, not squeezing, not forcing, but very natural. Um, so uh, there are actually a number of um, toys and different uh, devices that it, uh, people like Irina and I were all sort of experimenting with our own takes on it on how to do that. Tell your student uh, an image of dipping your finger into peanut butter. So you've got a jar of peanut butter. It's soft and squishy. How would you? Uh, you know, dip your finger into it or honey. So it's slow. We're listening to the, if it's a note, we're listening to the duration of the sound and then we're gently lifting. Um, I personally also like to sing with my students. So I have them, when we're doing these very simple exercises, even just on the black keys, sing on neutral pitch and See how your voice starts the note, continues, and then your voice lets go. What do you mean by neutral pitch? Like on ah, uh, or just just it, yeah, like, you, just uh, without uh, any syllables, right? Right, just, you right. Just go. Right. Okay, gotcha. Right. Or it, yeah. right, and we have an audience uh, question actually about that. Um, uh, T. Michelle asked, "What age do these?" games need to happen so basically oh, yeah. you know how young do you you know how do you start you know on, on your first lesson or you know after a couple months or what absolutely from day one they walk into a studio hello how are you let's explore the piano i'm not afraid to actually show kids the in, inside of the piano because that's the first thing they want to see so just kind of have the break the ice so introduce it to the instrument like play something for them very showy like or maybe Maybe something very beautiful and just to get their attention going and from the beginning uh, 
again, in the ideal world, maybe now uh, through uh, Zoom is not as great, but you could maybe have um, uh, a, a, song, a song playing or a piece playing and introduce them to these relaxation exercises. Say, okay, stand tall, let your arms hang loose by your side, and we're gently just going to swing them. I don't know, call a swing set. You can create your own uh, ways of explaining it however you like. And then... Um, we're going to become a windmill. So your arms are raising up and, you know, going up and down. Bend over, do the same thing. Let them kind of hang loosely. Just so the child becomes aware of, oh, okay, it's great to be relaxed. Do the Santa Claus arm. <laughs> right. So basically the point is to, to really get the student to understand how important it is to relax uh, yes. your, your shoulder, your, yes. your arm and everything in yes. your, your body. Do you yes. do these exercises... Um, Often, um, because they, they, they also have to play play the music at some point, right? So Of course. Yeah, so how, how often do you do these uh, exercises? So um, I'm still, and again, it depends on a student. So if, you've got, if you have a very active child, actually, currently, I started teaching a brother of one of the siblings that I had for a few years, and he was four, I believe. Boy, I mean, energy. He was under the piano, running around, doing all sorts of crazy things. But he has a perfect pitch. So I realized, okay, cool, let's explore that. So I would start immediately doing ear training exercises with him. So, of course, he would want to kind of start banging on the key. So uh, you could kindly say, okay, playtime is over. Now we're listening. So I play a couple of tunes for him, see if he can sing it back. And then we start to explore the keyboard. Now, because this kid had an older sister, he already knew, like he was almost teaching me. He's like, I know, I'll tell you where the low keys are, where the high keys are. So it's like, all right. Um, but there are different ways that you can uh, turn into a game. Where does the bear live or where do, where's the elephant? You know, have them go for deep sound and then little birds live over there. Um, so, uh, <clears throat> I do start kids quite young, so I'm not afraid to take a four-year-old. If I think that within a month or even two of lessons, they can settle down. Now, I have had a situation that had a little girl, the sweetest little thing. She was so shy. And after about a semester of lessons, you know, I said, why don't you guys come back when you're a little bit older and maybe, you know, like the piano now, because she enjoyed listening to music, but you couldn't get her to do anything. <laughs> so, but yes. Gotcha. Uh, and, and I'm just monitoring the chat here. We have another question. Um, uh, KFA Lala asked, um, do they teach or use the Alexander technique in Russia? Are you familiar with the Alexander technique? Um, you know, I am familiar. I don't know if they teach her in Russia. Now, um, keep it in mind, I was 14 when I left and that was I'm not going to tell you how old I am, but it was a long time ago. So, and I'm not going to ask. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. right. Back then, I've never heard of it. I think the first time I've heard of Alexander it was in college because we uh, some singers came. And Same, here. Workshop. Yes. Same here. Same here, yeah. Um, yes. Uh, but I have a little bit of know some things. Yes. Right. So, yeah, uh, my my college, uh, uh, Juilliard, also uh -huh. offered a, uh, some Alexander Technique classes. Uh, unfortunately, I did not take any of them. But I, yeah. what I imagine is it has a lot to do with, you know, relaxing as well and, yes. and also breathing. Um, breathing is another thing that's that's very pretty important, right? Uh, do, yes. do, 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 do Russian teachers talk about breathing a lot? Yes. And I can actually show you one uh, quick thing, if I may. So we call it, the, or you can call it whatever you like, really, but um, let's call it traffic light. So first, you make sure that you sit tall. The bench should be moved further away. I want to sit on the first one third, one fourth of the chair bench. Uh, my belly button is with the level with the white keys. And then we just let our arms droop, very simply. When you're ready, we lift our arms. Again, we want to be leading with the wrists. Not my arms, you know, just jump immediately. Take a big breath. Now, of course, I'm making quite loud, but that's for a purpose. And then when you're ready to begin, we prep again with the wrist. Now, while the fingers are still on the keys,
So if you can see, my arm is still a little bit involved. Again, it's, it's quite challenging actually to do, but with a child, if you are holding their arm, you can guide it and show them exactly how you want them to dip into the note. So it's actually a little bit challenging because you really want to control it and not control at the same time. So, and the same thing, let's say if you start with Mary had a little lamb, right, on the black key. So we're only using middle finger. Let me show you with my arm, right arm. So alignment, let's check the alignment. I'm trying again to lead with the wrist more, not you know, like this, not flat fingers, nothing kind of crazy. And listening to every sound. Lift. So if, if that kind of gives a, an idea. Yes, yes, yes. That was that was very, very... I, 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 I wish it continued. Very, very magical. Yes. And, and uh, yeah, I, I think... Uh, the one thing uh, about this 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 quarantine is that I, you can't really hold the students the yes. hand and that that's been really frustrating for me as well yes yeah. the one, one thing again all of these ideas is not you know i didn't come up with a lot of them i did some i modified a few but i'm really grateful for somebody like uh, irina goran who actually is widen the open on the internet and she's very happy to share her ideas uh, and i think we're all learning all learning from each other uh, but one thing i actually thought was also quite ingenious um she used um a hair band so uh, girls you know when we go for a run or want to keep our hair away from our face you let the the hair band i should have actually brought it in hang it down <laughs> A parent can do it. So say, mommy, daddy, come up here. You know, let's turn into a game. So we're like a butterfly. So you take the hairband and let move your child's arm like a puppeteer. Say, okay, you're a puppet. You're not doing anything. Give me your complete freedom and just do these sort of exercises. So and kids love it because something different. Um, you can also try, again, this is all uh, you can get online. These cute little hairbands. So it's a hairband with a little butterfly. You could make one if you want, but like a little dragonfly. We also put it for very little kids up here. And I'm afraid to have a little butterfly. <laughs> so. That's that's the advantage of, of uh, female teachers, I feel. I, I don't own any <laughs> any hairbands. Uh, I wish I had, but I might get some after, after today. <laughs> yeah. It could be anything. You know, I have also done with boys. Of course, boys are, I don't want a butterfly in my hand. Uh, draw a cute smiley face. Take a little mark. It's like, okay, it's not permanent. We'll be fine. So put a smiley face and let them kind of watch their smiley face, you know whatever it's uh, endless <laughs> right one thing i noticed about and then and we we have only like uh, a few minutes left i, sure, I, I definitely sure. uh yeah. want to ask one thing i noticed about russian pianists is that they not only do they have a really relaxed uh posture they, their hand is super strong so on um, to that end you know because because when you when you when when you do relaxation exercises with students yes. sometimes their hand gets too relaxed and their hands become like this um, what do you do about that uh, yes. when, when that happens? Uh, if it's corrected and taught from the very beginning, and if a parent is present in the lesson and is willing to take notes and videotape and actually practice it at home, you will be able to correct this from the very pretty early on so the one thing um i learned that is a good way so i wish i had a partner here to hold me but pretend this is a teacher right this is my arm so you can manipulate uh like open your hand close your hand right and then while with my other hand pretend the other one is free i'm guiding the finger joint so you can take it by the joint right here and pretty much play a simple tune but you are manipulating the student hand then we could do the same thing with the second finger and of course you will see all sorts of crazy stuff so fingers are spread out you could say okay um you know you are little uh i don't know butterfly or something butterfly. and you relaxed yeah anything i mean you can experiment um what else uh yeah so 
if if the students start to force the sound and i do notice it quite a lot they're they feel awkward and they're not quite sure what they're supposed to do so let them experiment and again that's just my opinion let them experiment but don't be afraid to correct in a kind manner don't say oh you got all wrong like don't do that's horrible make them feel comfortable so as soon as you see them not doing something correctly or you're happy with be able to uh, fix it on the spot basically but yes the one thing you did mention about pianists having big sound um that's one thing i do agree with to an extent but the more and more i'm becoming aware that young children do not need to be taught these things to, unless uh, you know we're born another kissin who's age of eight can play rachmaninoff you know that's probably a different story but with regular children let them learn gradually let them all take their time and when they are ready to play bigger you know toccatas or little percussive pieces um then the teacher can say okay stronger firmer fingertip more arm uh, always support with the arm but that's my opinion <laughs> understood so you would yes. prioritize uh relaxation uh over well, i mean i mean both are important obviously yeah. But. Yeah, and it's not like relaxation that you let your fingers be like noodles. No, we're not talking about it. You should be able to sustain the weight, the natural weight of the arm, all the way from shoulder on one fingertip. And so while we were practicing those little songs using just the middle finger, kids learn about the alignment. They learn that, yes, you can play deeper and then you do two note slurs or I'm kind of out of focus, two note slur three notes slurs how are we using the entire arm to travel and it's not going to be you know like droopy or noodle hands i call them so or spaghetti fingers the spaghetti I've, I've fingers <laughs> yeah i i only encountered that with transfer students to be honest with you who haven't had that foundation from the beginning right so, yeah. those are the type of students that i, that, that I experience as well when yes. when they transfer from outside um sometimes you know you, you have to fix a, uh, a bit of things yeah. but Great. Uh, we are already uh, up in time. Uh, time always passed really fast when, when the content is good, as good as this. So, I know um, every three hours. Right. I wish I, yeah, I wish so too. Um, uh, our, our massacre student is here. Uh, okay. So let's Beautiful. get him in. His name is Blake, Blake. And he will be using two devices, apparently one iPad and one i one iPhone, because okay. one for I think for him to see and one for us to see. So let's get them both in, and I'll mute. <clears throat> Hi, Blake. Can you hear us? <clears throat> All right, let's see. Hi, Blake, can you hear us? Yeah. Great. Oops. Um, He's in space. Let's mute your, let me see, let me mute your iPad. Can you still hear us? Yeah. Okay, great. Um, is, is, this, uh, is this good for you, Blake? Uh, you're going to use your iPad to, to see us, and then you're going to, listen to us on the iPhone. Is that correct? Perfect. Oh, uh, we don't need the other video. So, <laughs> oh, oh, I see. So let's see. There we go. All right. Okay. So let's let the parent do its thing. Okay, cool. Um, so Elena, I'll, I'll let you talk to the student and okay. I'll, I'll drop off Sounds for good. now. Thank yeah, you. Blakey, take your hand off this. Yeah. Hi, Blake. Hi. How are you? Good. <laughs> I'm so glad you came to play for me. I'm so excited. <clears throat> How long have you played the piano for, may I ask? One year. One year? One year. Good for you, buddy. That's great. So what are you going to perform for me today? Sonatina in F major. Uh-huh. Do you remember who the... Sanatin and F major. Oh, yes. The third movement, right? Yeah. Do you know how to say the composer's name? Mm, Anton Diabelli. 
Great job. All right. I'm all ears. Put your hand down. <laughs> Wonderful job. Thank you so much for playing for me and being so brave. Um, yes, so I really enjoyed your spirit for this piece. I heard a lot of humor, which is very important. Um, what do you think uh, about this piece yourself? Do you imagine anything? Do you... Not really. Okay. Well, let's start from the very beginning. How about that? First of all, buddy, um, can we ask your mom to help you find something that you can put on your bench and we're going to have you sit taller because I think you're going to feel so much more comfortable this way. <clears throat> it could be a pillow or a folded blanket or a phone book. So, and also, am I seeing uh, a pedal extender on the floor? What? Am I seeing a pedal extender on the floor? Thank you so much, mom. That's great. What is that little black box on, on your, uh, where your feet are? On your it's left. It's a turtle stool. Turtle stool? Is that for your feet so they don't dangle? Are you able to place your feet on the ground without them dangling? Or do you need it? I cannot really tell, unfortunately, from this angle. Um, no. no. So why don't we actually move you? So yeah, it looks like you need it. How about this? Can we move your bench slightly back? Can you move your bench slightly back? Just a little bit, right. Now, you do not need to sit on the entire chair. I'm going to show you something. Let me know if you can see me, yes? Yeah. Okay, do you see my chair? So I do have a little blanket as well. So I move it a little bit away and I want to sit kind of on the front part, not middle, not all the way to the chair, but the front part. So sit comfortably, make sure you have enough room. This is actually too close for me. So like this. Oh, now you disappeared. Brian, I think I can see myself in both videos. There we go. Thank you. Yeah, I fixed it. <laughs> oh, thanks. Awesome. So now, uh, how about your uh, feet? Can they reach the floor? <clears throat> um, yeah, they can. Okay, wonderful. So 
I, I think actually you are still sitting too low, but um, for future reference, do you feel where your belly button is, your belly? So that should be at the level with the white keys. So where is it right now? Kind of? Um, like literally? Literally underneath, yes. <laughs> so I would prefer it to be a little bit higher. That's all right for now. So, oh thanks mom that's awesome look at you now try to put both of your feet underneath the pedals or close to where the pedals are just a little bit yeah so it looks like you're gonna fall off all right so let's bring that uh, footstool for you one more time do you have it back thank you so much fabulous now I'll move it closer to the Okay, um, yeah, it's not as ideal, but that's all right. We'll work with it. Um, okay, put your, your knees close together, a little bit closer. There we go. All right, now, um, Blake, I would like to teach you one thing before you want to start any piece. Now, do you enjoy performing in recitals or any contests or anything like that? Uh, I have. You have, do you like it? Mm, not really not really okay so let's pretend on not a nice day we don't feel the best for example maybe you know it's raining outside but you still got to perform so there are a couple of points that you can try to get yourself a little bit more focused more relaxed and think about the piece that you're about to perform so what i need you to do is leave your hands on your lap Mm -hmm. sit nice and tall imagine that you are like a horseback rider so have you ever ridden a horse before yeah, yeah. you have what does that feel like when you're sitting on a horse can you describe it um like i'm basically sitting on something and then yeah. it feels like bobbing bobbing okay but how are you making sure that you don't fall over because it's not like you're sitting on a couch right like watching tv or anything um <laughs> i also am holding onto a rope holding up to the rope so can we pretend like right now maybe even close your eyes pretend you're on a horse so we're about to take off there we go can you sit a bit closer just a little bit forward just a tiny bit yes okay so now, the next thing is our arms are going to float up to the piano as relaxed as you can. And we're going to take a big breath. So let me see if I can show you. <clears throat> so. <gasps> Wait, and that playing yet. So in this step, we really shouldn't hear any sound. Let's try that one more time. So sit nice and tall. Very good job. Lift your arms. Let them float up and just comfortably leave them on the piano keys. Okay good now is this uh the best position for our hand should our wrist be down like this can you see me in the video no. okay now before you ready begin to play we're gonna lift again the right hand take a breath wait wrong keys sorry but only after you've prepared so, but you're right now your arms are kind of droopy so the fingers are not ready to play just yet let's try that one more time <clears throat> so put your hands on your lap there we go okay take a breath in sit tall uh-huh lift your arms bring them to the piano keys relax wait but don't droop your wrist don't droop them here we go breathe in and start you feel were you less nervous i bet you were 
Yes, that was calmer. That was great. Now, I would like for you to. I know you said you haven't thought about it, but do you like um, reading books or stories of any type? <clears throat> Uh, Harry Potter. Oh, Harry Potter. Okay, that's pretty heavy. How about something, um, I don't know, uh, kind of like a fairy tale or something, or maybe even like a Disney, like a little cartoon, Disney cartoon, I don't know. <clears throat> do you know, do you like cartoons? Uh, Star Wars. Star Wars. Another very heavy one. Okay. <laughs> I'm trying to... I'm trying to think of something that um, is happy and uh, joyful, cheerful, and maybe cute. I don't know. Do you know of any character that could re resemble that? Uh, it doesn't have to be a person. It could be an animal. Um... So, like... Whenever your right hand is playing this little descending scale, what could it be? Rather than, yeah, yeah, there are eighth notes with a bunch Walking of Walking down the stairs. Walking down the stairs, okay. So, do we want to uh, watch our feet when we wa walk down the stairs? Yeah, because otherwise it's like, wow, whoopsies, missed some stairs there. So, could you try for me just your right hand one more time? And what we're going to do, we're going to watch the, our, um, what is this called? The knuckles, right? This part, the shape doesn't collapse as soon as you play your fifth finger. I know it's quite difficult to do at the beginning, but try to move your arm slightly away from your body. So the big, big arm, the big muscle is there to help the fifth finger. So in other words, try not to kind of hit it this way. So your whole, uh, this part is kind of like hanging down the keys. Keep it a above, elevated. Could you try that? <clears throat> and I want you to think just going down the stairs. So, yes, good job. You remembered, lift your arm, breathe in. Wait, it's already hanging down. So can you place it cl closer to the black keys? <clears throat> You're doing so great. Closer to the black keys. There you go. That's a little too far. That's like we ran away. Okay, go ahead. Prep. <laughs> That's okay. You want to just maybe do your right hand or about the left? Doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Good job. You learn so quickly. Now, but you hit the key. You kind of went. Eek. Yes. Let's try that again. Let your pinky be like it's a little foot. Like, could I ask you to start it one more time? One last time. I promise I won't stop you. Wait. Yes, good. Start on the key. Lift, lift from the wrist. Fingers close to the black keys. A little bit. Close to the black keys. There you go. Super. for you do you ever practice hands separately you do like how many times before you put them together <clears throat> five six seven wow good for you so can i be a kind of a mean person and ask you to do it like 15 times <laughs> your teacher's gonna love it so Let's try it now, hands together, but try to keep your hands close to black keys and let's keep going this time, okay? <clears throat> so let's do, so put your Both hands feet. first on your lap. Both hands. Yes, thanks mom. Both hands. Left hand join, whoop, there we go. Float up, <gasps> breathe in, close to the black keys. Don't drop your fingers. <gasps> and go. <laughs> Oh, 
that was great. Okay, so we walked down the stairs and the next part, what do you think this means? What are we doing? I don't know if my piano is loud enough, but what? Uh, uh, you're walking up the stairs. <laughs> now we're walking up the stairs. Okay, you forgot something. It's like, oh, I forgot my wallet. I don't know. Um, and uh, what does your score, your music uh, score says? What dynamic marking should you start? <clears throat> uh, Say it again. I'm talking about measure, I think, not, uh, eight. I see piano. Like when you go... Piano. Pian you have piano? Super. Um, what do you have in measure 11? Crescendo. Crescendo. What does that mean? Like you're going soft and then loud. So first you go softer and then you get loud? Yeah. Are you sure? <laughs> You start softer or a little bit on the quieter side, so you have a room to go, right? So otherwise crescendo is not going to work, it's just going to be loud the entire time. I don't think that sounds beautiful, does it? So could you try that again, but keep, uh, keep try to keep both of your hands at the piano dynamics, piano dynamic. Could you try that please? And only here we're doing crescendo. I said it too loudly, but. Wait, but you know what? You know what, 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 what did we forget? What did you do before? Prep before you start, play the note. No, okay. Good job. Uh, I think it's an E natural, isn't it? C, D, and what do you have after that? E, E, F, and F sharp, and then G. Okay, and um, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Aim for that G all the way to the top. <clears throat> Just try that. Wait. No, what you could try? Could you do it in slower tempo and just say the note names out loud? C, D, E, F, F sharp, G. Let's try that. Ready? Good job. G. Awesome. Now, I see that you don't have fingerings written. Do you have finger numbers above those notes? I'll tell you what I have before, I, before you tell me what you have. I have fingering. Yeah, what does it say? It says one, two, three. One, two, three. All right, should we try that? Mm -hmm. All right. You're doing great. Okay. Could you now scoot forward a little bit? You're way too far. It's like we're afraid of the piano, so that's too close, probably. Yes. You're like, who's this lady? She's so picky. Now, still a little too far. Could you um, uh, move closer? There we go. Good. That's too close. A little bit. How about I'll tell you to stop? Stop. There we go. Good job. So, should we try it from there? I try not to stop you. <clears throat> Wait, B flats, right? Good. another question for you have you played many pieces with grace notes do you know what i'm talking about what the grace note is i've um played another one you know what it was 
the German dance in G major. Super. Okay. So, how do we play grace notes? What What are they? So they're basically for. So they're basically if I'm playing this. Yes. It would be. The other way. But what is it? Mm -hmm. What is it? If you're just doing it like a normal notes, then you do it. But in a grace note, you do. Well, um, you're right. So I mean, the melody really just the big notes, right? C G E D C B G D. Maybe you can think of two different voices. Yeah. Thank you. So, um, the grace note really just makes uh, ornaments or makes cute or pretty um, little gesture, I guess you can say. So. Can I show you something? And this is, again, just listen to me, but feel free to forget it next time. The way I like to do grace notes so they don't hurt my hand, because it feels like it's just uncomfortable, like, ah, gosh, grace note, I don't want to play it. Can you maybe think of two syllables? Um, tita or tati, and each finger gets its own little syllable. Um, tita, tita, tita. Very, like almost making the, the actual grace note a little longer. Could you try that for me in kind of slower tempo, please? Uh-huh. Okay. Good. Um, could you maybe say it like what I just um, suggested? Uh, tita or la la. Right. Yeah, but the ones in the bass club sound kind of muddy. It's like, rah, 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 rah. so when we first try, tido, 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 and uh, really aim for the middle finger. Doing great. I'm giving you lots of ideas. So start on the keys. <laughs> Good. Now, how about this? Let's not hit any of those notes. So let's pretend the piano has feelings. And if uh, you know how like sometimes some uh, kids can be kind of mean and they're like, I'm going to poke you. Does, has anybody done that to you? Hopefully not. Somebody's kicked me. Kick you? Oh, that's not nice either. Uh, but think like poking. Ouch! 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 So when I when I hit the piano, I often think, man, if I had feelings, I'll start crying. So what I'm gonna do is just let my fingers. Let me show you a little bit closer, slow, lower here. So, so the middle finger is the one that's kind of bouncing. I'm not don't wanna be hitting it, but prepare this one. Tito, tito, not ba 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 ba. That's painful. Ouch! Right. I'm just playing like random grace notes. So could you try that? Let's see what happens. So start um, the one on treble clef. Yeah, but you gotta sit closer, otherwise you're too far. Let's go closer. Okay, that almost worked. Hey, great job. How about this? Start on the key. Do you see my finger? This is my finger. So start on the key, and when you're ready to push the third finger up, your wrist will is going to lift. Tidam, bottom. It's almost like you like you have two feet and they're walking forward. Let's see if that works. I don't know. <clears throat> Proceed. Don't lift your finger. Yeah, great. Okay. Well, we are getting somewhere. So, would you feel comfortable, buddy, to start on the measure where you go? I'm trying to read it over here. Let's do it in kind of slower tempo. Could you try, please? Do you see where that is? Uh, page uh, measure 16. <clears throat> Wait. 
But but do do the little grace note before before the chord, not with the chord. something that you may want to just practice a, a couple of times because you did so, so great you've practiced that you did your job and now the fingers just remember what they were doing so now it's like whoa you want something different uh but hey you may want to experiment now the one thing uh in the measure where you go <clears throat> so seems kind of challenging can we just try the right hand by itself and then i'm gonna have your left hand do something completely crazy well not completely elena after this we might want to wrap it up after this sounds good thank yeah. you thank you all right blake let's go <clears throat> can you try just the right hand uh, by itself from wait uh, I think okay 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 that's good. can you try your left hand find c major chord uh, the lowest c major chord on the piano where would that live yeah that's gonna be uh an elephant how about maybe an octave above that okay now i want you to try it and play it as softly as you possibly can like it's in the in the basement could you try that softer like super soft one two three one two three very quietly well that's so quiet so we cannot hear it <laughs> there you go now let you you know let your arm bounce a little bit bounce bounce, bounce, bounce. Tricky. Okay. So, great job. As you practice, I would just suggest, and again, you can feel free to forget anything I told you. Try to play your left hand chords super low on the piano and let your right hand play the notes the way it's supposed to and see what you find. Such kind of a cool effect. So, <laughs> so it's tricky. Very well. Wait. different ideas you got today so thank you for playing yes, thank you thank you Very thank well. you blake thank you blake really really great job <laughs> and thank you elena sure uh, <laughs> poor kids <laughs> <like scared him. laughs> he's only six year old uh in in case uh, i haven't mentioned oh, it before really? he's oh, only yeah. six and that's a uh, really really great job blake yes yes he's doing wonderful <laughs> all right so that's let me remove him from the video all right so we have our next um uh, performer uh, -huh. uh he's a little older he i believe he's 13 uh, if oh, okay. i if i remember correctly oh, I uh, feel bad. <laughs> <laughs> now you, you can be a little meaner <laughs> i'm just kidding yeah. okay all right so let's let's get him in his name is Colin. Uh -huh. oh. <clears throat> Hi, Colin. Can you hear us? Uh, yeah. Great. Sweet. Uh, I'll leave it up to you guys. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you. 
uh, you, you can you can start if you okay. want, right? Uh, Elena, can he start or? Yeah, I I cannot see his video. Oh, you can't. Oh. No. You were kind of frozen in the midair. <laughs> oh, interesting. It, it, maybe it's something. Can you try changing the setting on your end because I can see both of you pretty clearly. Hmm. Let me try gallery view. Oh, okay. Yeah. If can you I see? Can keep a gallery view. <laughs> okay. Cool. Cool. Awesome. All right. <laughs> Thank you. Nice to meet you. Thanks so much for playing for me. Nice. All right. <clears throat> Brahms, right? Yeah. Very serious. Great. <laughs>
Colin. That was very beautiful. Thank you very much. Um, I mean, I want to congratulate you for a really brave sound. That's what I got from your playing um, and very beautiful tender moments in the middle section. Um, so it's, I will be completely honest with you. So I actually do not have this opus in my repertoire as in performing. So I've learned it and played around with it. So, but if I were to demonstrate a couple of things, I probably will not be able to do it as well as you do. So uh, really great. But but, you know, let's work with what we have. Um, I guess I just want to start with kind of like an obvious question. Um, what is the ballad? Well, I think it's, <clears throat> it tends to be like serious, I think, when I hear ballads and they're kind of very like filled with emotion. That's right. What other composers do you know who wrote ballads? Chopin was one of the first to like use yeah. good for you as like a name. yes it's true so it's almost like well it is like an epic tale um uh, actually I don't know if you know uh Brahms's opus t um I'm trying to remember uh opus 10 I believe the 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 ballad so one of them has such a creepy story behind it the Edward so it's like you know I don't know if you uh, Google it up, you can read about it. So there's some sort of like drama or uh, epic story of a battle or something going on. Um, I'm not sure if uh, Brahms had any stories in mind for this particular one, probably not, but it was written closer to the end of his life. So some um, people speculate that perhaps it's his, I don't know, thinking about the uh, mortality and immortality who knows so it could be some sort of um, struggle I guess so do you personally have any um, story that you imagine when you play this because um, you played it so convincingly that's why I'm trying to say that you really did a great job paying attention to the dynamics like you let the music unfold so I was just curious I was like I wonder if he's thinking any specific um, I was just thinking like really serious but like the mood shifts like very almost I wouldn't say abruptly but like I just was trying to think like how the piece sounded that's true what if we were to think of um, a character or um actually the boy before you mentioned Harry Potter so now I'm thinking about Harry Potter you know, maybe something dramatic in his story. And then how can we justify moving into such a sad and beautiful middle section? Like what's going on there? Um, well, I think for Brahms, it was probably like he has like mixed emotions or something. Could be. Well, he dedica dedicated to uh, Clara Schumann. So, you know, there's always oh, that. <laughs> yes. So, um, my only thing well actually two things i was thinking what can we do to make a storytelling uh and again this is just my opinion you can completely forget as soon as you and i say bye bye um i like stories i like to be inspired by music i can create my own story it doesn't have to be anything obvious but put more personal emotion into <clears throat> like the slow section so how what how, what do we do to make um let's say the the left hand is so beautiful the little pattern so it's i don't know it's like a water i guess a, a sense of um movements there but the right hand voicing i mean it's in a duet and then yeah kind of like a duet right um how do we hear that so it doesn't sound just a bunch of notes and a bunch of phrases do you know what i'm trying to say uh, i think <clears throat> Is it like how to like voice it? Yeah, like voicing. Yeah. So almost the, imagine that it's a singer, you know, expressing a, or maybe singing an aria, but it's very personal, but it's um, kind of like hidden, but it wants to be heard. So of course you're not going to be pounding on those notes, but I feel like you could linger a little bit more. Again, that's just my opinion. Would you feel comfortable starting with the middle section? Could we just work on the right hand there? 
<clears throat> sure, and uh, I apologize that the screen is a bit small and it's dark. So if I comment on something and you're not doing it, completely ignore it. It's just I can't see very well. <laughs> so, but go ahead. Let's just try maybe the right hand by itself. <clears throat> That's beautiful. I will just also stop you for the time's sake. Are you using a pedal right now? Uh, yeah. Okay. So one thing that one of my uh, dearest teachers did to me, the tor like to torture his students, he said, play everything without pedal and practice without pedal. If your fingers can do it, great. Add the pedal as like, I don't know, a cherry on top of ice cream. So it may be kind of challenging, but let's just experiment. So foot off the pedal and what do we need to do to really project? Uh, again, I may butcher it a little bit. I would have to figure out a better fingering there, but could you try lead with your <clears throat> with your arm? Mm Uh-huh. Yes. What do you think about that little trick? Uh, with the arm? Mm-hmm. Are you actually playing even without the pedal as a practice? Oh, well, it's always like, when I try to do it, it's like, sometimes it's frustrating because like, I'm used to doing it with the pedal. And then right. I and it's like, oh, the, like... I don't know, the carpet was removed underneath my bench or something. Yeah, it's a little uncomfortable, but this is a good way to practice. Another, again, this is just an idea. Try um, linger on the top note. Again, the way I see you, it looks like you're leaning away. Now this may feel like an artistic thing, like, oh, we wanna feel the music. Don't feel it so much from your body. Show us it more with the sound. So when you linger on the top note, can you just, as a practice, let go of the thumb and just, uh, um, I guess you can say, rest on the top part of the hand and imagine that the thumb is completely separated from your hand. So these fingers and the thumb is its own um, character. Loosen it up. Could you try that? Yes. Super. One last thing again from where I'm sitting. Um you looks like your arm kind of wants to bob up and down a little too much. Do you do that quite a bit? Uh, I think so. Okay. Uh again, it may feel like we are relaxing um but what if we were to just quiet the upper arm altogether? Put your arms on your lap for me for a second. Yes, lean forward kind of bit. Imagine that you're like a horseback rider. Yeah, there you go. Now, just bring your arm up to the piano and let that weight, yeah, carry on the finger, good. So play the first note and don't go like this with your wrist, don't lift. So it's like dead arm. <laughs> Again, I don't expect it from first try. It's tricky. Try it. Do it. Mm -hmm. uh, relax your, your uh, wrist a little bit more. Yes. Move your arm slightly out. Yeah, there you go. Pretend you're an eagle. Eagles have wings and they flop. Uh -huh. Good. And a little lower. So again, don't lift too much. Yes. So again, we're not going to bore everybody, but that's one way you may consider to practice um, to bring out the melody more. Yes, and um, there are a couple of things I circled um, after measure 57 where it gets a little murky and a lot of suspension. So, so I'm thinking... <laughs> Again, uh, be careful with the pedal because uh, when you performed it, I couldn't hear um, mm, the change between those patterns. It was just like more of like one color. Could you maybe enjoy them a little bit more? 
um, I don't know really how, like more this one, maybe less this one. So we hear again clarity. <clears throat> Yeah, and this again, in my opinion, because you have a crescendo, maybe you could shape it more. Uh, sorry, one and two. Yes, thank you. <clears throat> so maybe let's try that from sixty-three ones. Again, maybe you could go more towards the G, D, 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 O, more singing, like you're really trying to sing with the music. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Do you play a lot of Bach? Let's say yes. <laughs> yeah, <I've played> <laughs> okay, what box have you played? Um, I've only played the inventions and maybe like a couple of minuets when I was little. Younger, right? Good for you. How many inventions have you? Have you done symphonias? No, <clears throat> Okay. Symphonias are more hard, much harder because it's like three voice, right? Um, what is ultimately the goal, like us as piano players? What do we want to or learn to go through, I guess, like little preludes, the two part inventions, the symphonias, and ultimately we want to play what? Um, it's okay if you don't. <clears throat> well, evenly? That's true. The well-tempered clavier, right? <laughs> oh yeah. So I'm thinking fugues in general. Uh, so I assume you didn't play a fugue? Oh, no. Okay. Like, this is- Hand separation, like, cause I know it's like four, it could be that's right but like here again uh because bach uh, let's call him the great grand great father of classical music so everybody learned from him so uh in little elements like that uh in my opinion it's very B bachian i guess you can say so you have two voices middle voice and the top voice so they're having a conversation you know but if we're not voicing it uh sometimes it could become kind of mushy and a little too backgroundy does that make sense? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Um, what else was I was going to say? <clears throat> Could you actually maybe start it for me one more time? <clears throat> now you warmed up. Yes, and just one thing, as you start, be careful that you don't lean away from the piano. So put yourself, um, move, I don't know, do you have a bench, an adjustable bench, or what are you yeah. sitting on? Huh? Adjustable bench, great. Is this as high as it can go? Um, no, it can go a lot higher. Okay. Again, I, I can't really see, so I don't want to give you wrong information, but you could consider going up just a little bit so your belly button is at the white keys and just so your, your um, elbows are slightly um, higher than the piano keys, just a tiny bit. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. And don't lean away. Woo! So let's try that one more time. <clears throat> Yes, great job. Uh, one thing at the very beginning, do you at all feel tense? Do you feel um, like when you start? Yeah. Boy, tensions, like if it could disappear, everything would be magical. Yeah, it's hard. Um, again, anything I, I say right now, take it or leave it, but you may want to consider just to practice it. 
sometimes what it helps uh, just even mentally release the tension again I'm gonna butcher it so we are landing on a strong chord but I'm mentally thinking relax let that energy flow out rather than and go that will not help much could you maybe try it in slow tempo and you know what i do think you sing a bit too low can we crank it up a little higher okay. yeah and if your teacher says not to you know you listen to your teacher so a little higher for me <clears throat> yes it's getting there maybe a little bit more does it feel weird uh, a bit. Not a really. bit. um the reason why we want our elbows be uh, above the keyboard is to, again, we're talking about free arm. The energy got to flow to the fingertips. So one way to think about our arm being like a hose. So like when you water flowers in the garden, for example, what happens when you step on the hose? Um, like you water, 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 whoop, somebody stepped on it. What's going to happen? Yeah, the water flow stops, right? So imagine that this tension is what kind of stops the sound from flowing. So when you, even if you sit higher, it already can float freely. So I don't know, just try. Last, keep breathing. <gasps> keep breathing. Let's take a big breath. <gasps> I mean, from what I heard, it sounded already much better. So um, again, keep working on your voicing. So in measure 10, when it picks into measure 11, where do the top notes, uh, the little melody notes go? The little pickups, uh, let's see. G, A flat, B flat. What are they doing? <clears throat> like where, where's the phrase going to? Yeah, where's, the, yeah. Um, because they're pickups, right? Pickups are not accented. I think they're probably going to the B flat. Yes. So one thing you may consider, again, um, as a practice, could you sing it? So when you get there, just think of melody. So instead of... You know what I mean? Like doing the opposite. <clears throat> Would you feel comfortable singing in public? Okay, then under your breath, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, like as quiet as you can feel comfortable with. Okay. So and play, so play and sync. Okay, this time I felt like I heard it better. But then you've got um, another thing you may agree or disagree. Uh, in music, when a composer writes patterns and he repeats them many times, uh, do we want to play them all the same? I don't think, unless it's like minimalist music, right? Then you better practice keeping them the same, but not in Brahms. So maybe, again, my opinion, think like a uh, tiny bit crescendo. So the first one is piano, a little bit more. And then as you get higher to that C, do, 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 something needs to happen. So it's not the same. Does that make sense? Oh, yeah. And then T, R, R. Hmm? I was trying to like go loud on the first one and then like softer on the second one. Okay, that's good. That's um, let's try that. Maybe don't think loud, but uh, more supported, more because loud could also be like ba ba ba, <laughs> kind of weird. So just try. Yeah, but your tops are disappearing. Your tops are disappearing. They need to go. 
I am here. Where are you? And then go. I'm just, sorry, I'm saying breathe, keep breathing. Breathing is very important, especially in performance. Um, the one thing I would suggest, do you ever practice in slow tempo? Uh, yeah. You do, like a lot, like every day? Well, when I'm first learning a piece, okay. I maybe I would probably do it every day, or like with a metronome and then turn it up 10 beats every day. Oh, good for you. Wow, I wish my students pra practice with metronome, but you know, uh, it's great. So the one thing, again, I would suggest play even hands separately in a slow tempo, but I don't want to say like a detached sound, we'll call it a little bit like a non legato. So you really know exactly where your fingers are going on all of those chords and those little gestures. So when you solidify it in slow tempo, keeping in mind the free arm breathing, when you do it in fast tempo, hopefully it will feel easier to play. Do you know what I'm getting at? Uh, yeah. Yeah, because if we only, you know, learn the piece, awesome. Now I can enjoy and just keep going back and forth in fast tempo. Unfortunately, the muscle memory forgets the initial practice. Again, my opinion. Um, uh, all right, well, could you maybe continue? How about... We'll measure 27 and relax. That part. Sure, whatever you feel comfortable, somewhere there. Okay. Good. So in this section, uh, this is what measure 32, I'm thinking, what can we do to bring out that top G? So you've got G, then you've got the chord. I'll do a slow tempo because I cannot play this. Right? So it's E, O. that annoying G keeps reoccurring. So what is it? What is it doing? Well, I think it's probably since you have to go to other places with your left hand and can't hold the octave, it's probably kind of providing a, well, even though it's like the highest note, it's kind of providing a structure. Yeah, right, because we are in G minor, so it's like, yes, here's your G notes. We'll repeat it several times. But the thing is, uh, the rest of the chords, you might want to try to play them, s I guess, maybe quicker staccato, less loud, so you really hear... One of the Russian teachers, or I'm sure there are many of them who say the same thing, your fifth finger got to be like a pencil. Um, that's not a really great statement because you can actually hurt yourself, but if it's done uh, correctly, push, uh, like, um, land on it a little bit more fuller. So don't poke at it that it hurts, but let it sink in a little bit more into the key. Let's see what happens. <clears throat> Sure, whatever you like. Okay, try not to hit it. Um, if you hit it from the top, that's already kind of like, ouch, right? You might want to dip. Dip, dip. Let's just kind of experiment with it a little bit. Yeah, but this is hitting. Don't hit. Uh, let me think. Um, so I'm approaching it uh, with my fingers already being up on the keys. Uh, dips. Yeah, it looks a little flat. Could you maybe uh, make it a little bit cur? Um, do you have a pencil anywhere by any chance? Uh, 
I'll show you a little trick. <clears throat> and after this trick, uh, we want to <laughs> wrap it up. <laughs> yes, thank you. Doing a great job. Again, um, just as a suggestion, hold your pencil or a pen with the fingertips, the top four fingers laying across, right? And then the thumb underneath it yes so you're kind of spreading them a little bit this way let's kind of bring them together so ooh, the close their hand yes that's right okay now put a pencil away and bring that hand shape on the keys so if you want you could even just hold it balance it like a little bit put it down and then well um try to make sure that the knuckles are still showing so we want the knuckles are kind of like a roof over the house so if the house the roof's collapsing nicht good like this in germany yes you're, you're kind of spreading your fingers can you bring your thumb closer here i'll show you yes like imagine that you are cradling a baby bird so can you flip your hand this way yes i don't let me know if you cannot see me i can turn Yes, awesome. And now flip it upside down and relax. Yes, so bring it and just relax. Don't hold it tight. Yes, your wrist is a bit high, you see? It goes, drop it. And move your arm out, away, your elbow. A little bit. It's kind of hard. Um, again, just for the time, we probably cannot do all of that. But as a practice, do this a few times so when your arm is landing, let me see if I can explain a little bit better. So pretend this is your other hand. You're kind of going like this. Can you describe this? Um, it's like... Can you see it? Yeah, it's like... Do, do, do. Yeah, it's like... The wrist is kind of uh, uh, going way too high. So what you want to do is move your arm out a little bit and align it with your fifth finger so where your elbow this part forearm and your pinky should be like a straight line yeah kind of getting there your thumb is now off the keys can you bring your thumb to the keys it should be resting yes it's getting there yes that's the idea all right so just practice and see if that will be helpful at all um but I, yes i guess the one thing i would say do it a few several times in slow tempo and just work on your voicing without the pedal. I think that will help clean up the things and keep breathing, especially in big sections. Okay. okay? Great job. Thank you so much for playing for me today. Thank you, Colin. Great job today. And thank you for joining us today. All right. Hopefully Ooh. that's helpful. <laughs> That was so Let great. <laughs> you know, one of the dilemmas of uh, piano teachers, uh, you know, from my own experience is that when you, you there's so much to talk about um, <laughs> always, and, and the, the harder the piece get, the more you have to talk about. And, and it, it's hard to decide, right? Sometimes, you know, what, what do you talk about? Do you talk about the te technical side? Do you talk about the musical side? Do you combine them? But how how would that fit in a forty five minutes? You, you know, do you uh, do you find yourself having to pick and choose? You know what to talk about in a lesson and. Yes. Um, so, uh, one quote I actually heard uh, read really um, uh, by I think it was actually maybe one of his students by Theodor Lashetitsky, who was a student of Cherny. Uh, he, he is kind of paraphrasing his own words, but saying that there is no um, technique without musicality so when we work on our technical passages but if there's no musicality behind it is there's no point and there's no musicality without technique so how do we teach um i guess sound production of whether it's chords or voicing uh, playing a simple scale but still being able to control it have your body control it of course essence is music so we got to learn how to interpret what it's on the page but if we're also a nervous wreck and things feel uncomfortable and we don't address it and don't fix it that creates a lot of technical problems um you know almost leading to injuries actually i think so right 
And that actually happened to me. So the reason I became so obsessed with it, I um, researched Taubman technique uh, for my own benefit. I saw some teachers really wanting to understand what is the secret? I just don't want to be hurting anymore. You know, that's a whole nother topic of the, the, the oh, Taubman yeah. technique. Yeah, yeah. Uh, about avoiding injuries. And, and yeah, it's I, I've, I've also read a bit about it. Uh, and I think you know, uh, one of my teachers at Juilliard, uh, Johev Kablinski, yes. uh, she she's a big fan of uh, the Talman technique yeah, as well. I heard. <laughs> <laughs> right. Great. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, Elena, I just wanted to really thank you for for sure. doing this masterclass episode with us. It's it's been so great um, uh, hearing your wisdom, uh, hearing you share your wisdom with us and with the audience. Oh. Uh, <laughs> My pleasure and honor. So thank you so much for asking. Thanks. It's great. Thank you. Uh, and I want to thank our audience as well for, you know, uh, joining us and sticking with us uh, at such a, a late time. Well, unless you're in the West Coast or yeah. <laughs> in another country, another. then 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 great. Thank you uh, for joining us. Good morning. No where, yes. <laughs> or if you're in the morning, no matter where you are. Um, if uh, you want to hear more uh, performances or, you know, learn more about Elena, uh, where, where should we go? Instagram uh, or <laughs> where can sure. we? Sure, yeah. find me on Instagram. Uh, I do have a YouTube channel. Uh, I go just by Elena Victoria. Victoria is my middle name. Uh, or you could just Google my name. It comes up. And also uh, my partner and I, we have a um, uh, duo together. So he's a wonderful cellist. So we have a Facebook page. It's Nishdanova Plachik Duo. And uh, hopefully when the quarantine is over and we're free to move around and tour again, we always... Um, post our updates where we're playing what we are doing so and we right. are working on the website as well so hopefully that will be coming soon sure <laughs> yes yes so definitely follow elena uh, uh on on youtube and on facebook uh, her duo page um so uh with that the piano mass uh, star master class um happens every tuesday night at 8 p.m eastern time um, uh, if you want to be a performing student, uh, go to our website at thepianoleague.com slash masterclass. And last but not least, of course, subscribe to our YouTube channel if you want to hear and uh, watch more piano content. Um, with that, we finished today's episode. So piano leaguers, thanks for watching. Uh, stay safe. Uh, happy practicing. And we'll see you next week. See you guys. <laughs> Let me just play the video to end. <laughs> forgot to share see this is all very new <laughs> very technical all right you're doing great you're doing amazing <laughs> all right there you go